Right, so this is Marvelly Myers continuing documenting my journey up to where I'm now at. After recording what I've just said in the previous recording about phoning the number, not getting any response, so I decided, ah, uh, it's just my former employers winding me up I went to the paper shop as per usual because I can access the Daily Express online but my husband needs to get it in paper form my husband introduced me to the Daily Express when we meet and I've been reading it ever since I even made contributions to their mental health crusade there's, there's more to come about them but let me get on with it so went out got the paper came back took off my jeans i was wearing short shorts not leggings had on a vest god must have caused me to put, put on that vest belongs to my brother who died in prison as a result of nobody listened to his concerns so he done a criminal act sat in the church waited for police to come yeah, now I know what my poor brother must have gone through. Right. So, make myself comfortable because it's two of us in this place. My husband, who is coming up 98 on the 8th of March, and myself. So, we have different needs. So, I'm always working to facilitate my husband's needs. So... I'm not getting all the privileges and he has to do with what's left. I was sat on this chair right here. This is my workstation when my the buzzer went. So all I need to do is turn the chair, look through the window, and when I look through the window, I see the police vehicle out there. I got up from the chair, I walk here, I would have put the the door on the latch and as you can see I have the key in my hand because of reasons I will tell you about and I will say I put this on it for ease of doing what I'm doing so I would come here Opened the door, put the, the, the door on the latch, invited the, the police in, turned back the door, and entered my flat. So it's on the latch, as you can see, because I'm expecting them to come in. I came back, I sat in this chair, Whilst I'm sat in this chair, I heard one of the officers asking, where is she? And I called out, push the door and come in. So I'm still sat here. And yeah. No, I'm just going to do some recording for the way me and do not know how to my... Me just had do some recording to re re tie up what happened to um. You don't, you're not listening to what is out there. 37 year old pe police officer died from COVID. Huh? You don't understand what is happening, Tom. Please trust me. And don't, and don't let what my horoscope said them. Um, don't expect me to fail. It's been seven years now. Today is the day I said my final goodbye to my mother in Jamaica in 2014. So I've lost my train of thought. Okay. Came back, sat here, heard one of the officers saying, where is she? Push the door and come in. I'm sat there. Three officers came in. Two female and a male. I can remember that. The one in the front didn't know her name at the time came 
And that was where she sat. I'm almost certain she sat. And then the other two would be somewhere here. So I'm sat here. She would be there. Because I would say, make yourself at home or something to that effect. So I was the one who said, oh, you've come to interview me. Her response, and she's the only one I can remember having any conversation with until I went, was handcuffed and I spoke to the, the male. So yes, I'm sat here. And she came in and I said, oh, so you're here to interview me. So the weight had lifted off my head, off my shoulders now, because it's the 30th, not the first, but I'm thinking, silly me. Oh, the officers are working with me. They've come to interview me. So that will take the pressure off. By the time I said, asked the question, so you're here to interview me? She, she said, no. We're not here to interview you. You have to come to the station. But even then, I wasn't thinking about any of what was done. It's the 30th. See if you see what's in my head. I still have a day to play with. So by the time she said, no, uh, I'm not here to interview you, I turned around because this is the file. As you can see, I keep files. Make my life easy. So this is the file. So I was going to show the officer the letter to do with the meeting at Sodok Police Station. So by the time I says to her, let me show you some documents about the meeting I arranged at Sodok Police Station. She says to me, we're not here about that. We're not here about that. That's not what we hear about. So I turned back around. Since they're not here for that. She might have said, they're here to arrest me. But I'm not certain. I'm not going to say she didn't say it. But because today is the 30th, it, I wasn't panicking or anything. I was still calm, most likely. I guess when the calmness, calmness went is when I picked up my phone. Because now I intend to call my stepson to let him know new developments. I picked up my phone so I would be here with the phone. This would be on, that would be on, that would be on. I don't know, maybe I'll have to take it to the shop now because from when it's blocked out. So I might take it for a final recharge up and then stop paying for maintenance. I took my phone up, ready to key in the number to call my stepson to let him know new development or send him a message or whatever. The same person who said we're not here for that because the other two, I think they might still be stood in the perimeter of the doorway. Yeah? That's what my memory. She was the dominant one. She said, I'm not allowed to use my phone. I must put it down. So me being me, I put the phone down. I'm sure that would be where I put the phone. Somewhere here. Since I'm not allowed to use my phone, I got up off the chair. So this is me. So there would be things lying in the floor. I tidied up this morning, people. So there would be folders and stuff lying in the floor, not maybe in this direction, and a paper was there, Daily Express. I got up, I walk about this pace, and this is where I was tackled. So I was tackled by that person who was there, who I now know to be Holly Sweeney. I was tackled by the other female who came in right here, it all happened right here, and the male. Yeah, they're trying to take him out of the picture, but that's not what happened. I should have, I'm going to go back and unlock the door now that I've done this. I have to be cautious. Yeah. Security. And as you can see, I still got my key, although I'd come in. Right. So as I was saying... I was tackled these spaces from here to here, and this is where I was tackled. From there, the person who stood there, or was sat there, the two who came from here, and this is where I was tackled. So when they tackled me now, because I don't know if I'd said, I'm going to speak to my husband or whatever, 
But I guess by this time I would have been in a panic. Tackled here. And this is where it all happened. In this perimeter. So I was handcuffed. Taken out the room. I'm sure before all of that happened. Some conversation gone on about getting dressed and whatever. And I must have objected. For in my head, today is the 30th, not the 1st. So I was tackled right there, handcuffed. And I was shouting out, Tom, Tom, Tom. <sighs> I was taken out through the door, went to the van. And the next thing I know, so I can't tell you 100% if I was escorted out of the house by the three officers or what. All I know, I was led from here in handcuffs. Partially, in a, partially clothed to the van. And the next thing, I heard the female saying to the male, you need to watch her. So he came and he sat in the, I was on the back seat and he came and he sat on the side seat. So at some stage he was there watching me, I'm in handcuffs. As you will, when you read the thing, you will hear about disappearance and all that. And all that I've done, wrestled to one female and grabbed the taser of another. So once I was sat in the van, in vehicle, I remember saying to the young man, the handcuff is hurting me. Yeah? To this day, I don't know if that young man responded to me. Right, I'm going to tie this up now. It was days later. My husband says to me, The foggy one was searching my bedroom. Yeah? Because I was sat out there being watched by the male officer. Whilst the two female was in here, I don't know what happened. Yeah? It was what my husband says to me days later. All right. After everything was said and done, I don't know how many minutes, how long I was there. I don't know. No, I have no time in frame. Yeah? I was driven, yeah, I remembered one of the PC, the same one Holly Sweeney, giving directions to someone else. So apparently two vehicles came, a patrol car and a van. So she gave directions for the other person to go back with the, 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 the car. I remember that distinctly. Right. I'm trying to remember now. So I was transported to the Walworth Police Station. Rickety, 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 rickety. Handcuffs hurt in my hand. And the van was parked out in the yard. So by this time now, I'm in the van, partially clothed. And I started to shiver. At this time now, it was Holly Sweeney who stood outside the van watching me. Every time I looked at her, she made up her face. And if you go back and look in their report when she said, mm, um, what she was doing was unnerving me. But I took it in my stride because I know that's how we black people say white people smile. They see you and they crunch up their face. But it was unnerving me. So I try not to look at her as much as possible. But she was always making sure I see her. Right. At one stage, so by this time now, I was shivering. The friction of the handcuffs behind my back was hurting me. I can't remember how it go in order. But I remember I had some communication with um, Holly Sweeney and I asked her, how old are you? And she says, 24. So I says to her, if my eldest son 
had started a family when he got married. I could be his grandmother, her grandmother. And she says to me, I, if you were my mother, I could understand. I said, I did not say your mother. I said your grandmother. Yeah? That was one of the conversations I, I, ha I had with her. I, 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 can't, I won't say what sequences this conversation come into. But every time I see her looking at me, I, I am sure... She must have noticed I was shivering. And then later on, as I said, I don't know about um, sequences of what happened. She came and she sat on the side seat of the van and she turned to me and said, so she must have noticed I was shivering. She turned to me and she said, by the way, Marvely, do you have any COVID symptoms? And all I do, I looked at her and I responded, I said, isn't it rather late now for you to be asking me that question? Yeah? She never asks, how are you feeling? Whatever. She must have noticed the shivering. Anyway. <laughs> at one stage now, another police officer came to the van. No, he was outside the van. I called his attention. And I says to him, the last time that I had to call the ambulance out... Oh, it wasn't the last time. I said I had to call out the ambulance on the 3rd, 3rd of September 2020 because I had the, sh uh, the shakes and I just couldn't control it. I says to him, I have Parkinson's in my DNA. I do not have a medical diagnosis for, par for Parkinson's, so I cannot claim it as a disability. But I, I have a diagnosis for chronic anxiety. This little runted boy now, because I don't know if he has doctorate as part of his qualification, he's going to ask me, what do you do when you're, 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 when you're having a, a chronic anxiety attack? Do you use breathing techniques? Yeah? The reason why I had told him about the shakes because I was by now shaking uncontrollable and the, the friction of the handcuffs was hurting me more. So I says to him, I told your colleague before I left home that the handcuffs was hurting me. I said, it's hurting worse now. Yeah. But what really got me upset was when he's going to ask me what breathing techniques because he, he he offered to open the handcuffs for me to to slacken them and i said okay if, if that would help that's fine but what really upset me the fact he's going to ask me what breathing technique i use when i get a, a chronic anxiety attack i am in this situation my hands are handcuffed behind me i am scared that my Limbs are going to start to crumble because I do get those times when my muscle crumble and I have no control. I have muscle contract. The, the fingers just crumble. So that was the fear in my mind. So that's why I was seeking help. Yeah. He asks me now. So when he said to me, I asked about the techniques. I asked him what, what's his qualification, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, what's just going to trigger. So I just started cursing. So by the time I started cursing, a whole, I don't know where the officers came from, but they were all around the vehicle. And I'm thinking, okay, now here is a, here is a, here is an animal, here is an animal in the zoo. That was what's going on in my head. So crowd attention, it's the circus. That was in my head. He asked me, He attempted to open the, the handcuffs. Then he said, I must bend over. And I'm, I did actually bend over because, you know, instinct. But it was afterward I'm thinking now, why are you asking me to bend over? I'm partially naked. If it was only the officers who came to my house, I wouldn't mind so much. But by now... I don't know where these officers came from. They don't have anything to do. In the end, he didn't open the, the, the handcuff. So I, in my head now, I'm thinking, not a thing more. One of the officers 
realizing that I was partially closed, asked him to tell me to bend over. That's what's in my head. Yeah? All right. As I said, I don't know how things happen in sequence. I was there. I called to Holly Sweeney and I said, I need the toilet. She says to me she has to go and find out because there's a, a long queue in there. She went and she come back and she said, they won't allow us in there. So now I'm, I'm holding my legs together and I'm thinking, oh my God, don't let me lose my dignity. Right. I am in the van. I'm, I'm getting the shakes. So the handcuff is hurting me. And all the things now, because by now panic attack must be setting in. The trauma, the, 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 the triggers for my trauma has been exacerbated. Right. Long after, as I said, I don't know time frame by this. All I'm there trying to keep your dignity. The handcuffs is hurting. Whatever is happening, eventually they come to get me. Now, I know Nikki. Nikki Wright. And the young man who had told me to bend over. So by the time the two female officers was leading me down, he was standing a little way. The first thing he asked me was, have you calmed down now? Telling me to calm down is another trigger. So I gave him some choice wor Jamaican words. Going into, yes, I told him why I was upset. And I, he, was, he was really generous in his apologies. He really was generous in his apologies. Yeah. I will give that to that young man. Don't know if he's Harry Stock or if he's Ben Godfrey. I don't know who is who now. I know the two female. So bleeding me into the station now. I remind. No, I was in the station. Sat on a side. Handcuffs hurting me. I reminded the officer. I said I need the toilet. Yeah. So now I'm being treated less than an animal. Their response set off another spate of cursing. So I curse. And I told the, the one named Nikki right now is going to tell me, huh, huh, why don't I calm down something to that effect? They are trying to help me and whatever. And I give her some choice bad words and I tell her, if I, I need to piss right here, I will piss right here. Yeah? Right. I went before the, the sergeant. That's when he, when the, the handcuff was released now by the same one and i'll have to tell another story about the excuse why i was asked to bend over he didn't ask me to bend over he just released it there was no problem in him releasing it so i'm wondering why he couldn't release it when i was in the in the van so it was the sergeant patel who noticed that there were marks on my hand from the handcuff and the only other thing I'm going to say about that there is when he's, he keeps mentioning how fit you are. You're so fit. So when he asked me my date of birth, I told him and he said, oh, you're 60. And I said, no, I'm 61. But the next thing that really put me off is when he asks, oh, do you have a British passport? And I says to him, that's for me to know and you to find out. So after all these procedures was done now, I remind I might have reminded about the toilet. I cannot go to the toilet until I'm assigned a cell. So I was I was stood out there waiting for whatever they do their thingy. So that was when um Holly Sweeney asked me, How are you feeling? And I says to her, like punching somebody, but I don't do physical. I said, I write. And as a matter of fact, I will be writing all about this and you will all be starring in your own show. Yeah? So eventually, now, I'm there from, from, my, from, from, from my lead now, you know, out in the van for ages asking for the toilet. I still can't use the toilet until I was assigned a cell. So I was assigned the cell. Now that's when I use the toilet. There was no toilet roll. Yeah? 
And after everything I didn't cry, nothing. It was when I was sat in the cell by myself now. That's when the tears came. And the person who came to get me to do the fingerprinting and, and, and whatever, black man, tall, slim black man, and he says to me, don't cry. Everything will be all right. And when he took me there to do the fingerprinting, he said, follow me, and we were there. So I wasn't just going to do anything he asked me without asking a question. And he said he likes how I'm asking question. And he explained to me. And he says to me, it's best you cooperate. Because if you don't cooperate, you, they're going to get you to do it by force. And I think to reassure me, he says to me, let me tell you something. You see where you're sitting there now? I was once sat there. It's not as bad as it seemed. Yeah? And I guess God placed that young man in that to do that for me, to reassure me, to let me understand that, yes, things happen to people. So that's why I'm doing this reflection, because if these police officers who come into my house and leave me exposed, my husband and I, to whatever, yeah, keep Southwark safe, yeah, if they think they're going to come into my house, and do what they've done. Yeah? This is why I keep this for, 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 for Tess. From Tess. My husband was sat, was stood here that day with Tess. When he said to me with tears in his eyes, Mervily, you need to get support for Tess. And what I see happened to Tess. Social services didn't do anything until Tess died in her house. Yeah? And that's when police is going to come to want to ask questions. Where were the, the social services and the police when Tess was needing help? When my husband was stood at this window. Yeah? And when the police came to section me under a false malicious report. This is the window my husband was stood when they wanted to take me away by force. And until I showed them the medical report that I had taken to show to I taken to show to MP Neil Coyle when I visited his surgery because he had used his mother mental health issues to get support and yet they're not prepared. So that's why I'm taking up this battle. The young Children with special educational needs. Yeah? Why was this? Yeah? This is about a building that has been given priority over me. Because you couldn't work out some ways for me to go get my flu job. A building was a victim. It's more priority. So you have to do that. Yeah? These are things that's been reported. Workplace bullying cost Britain 18 million. Yeah? And all these things. Yeah? That's my diagnosis for chronic anxiety. Yeah? Certificate of naturalization. Yeah? What is that? Isn't that discrimination? Unconscious, unconscious biases? Yeah? This was when I was turned down for the role of lead early years practitioner. Which resulted in another breakdown. And that's when I decided. Or a meltdown. That's when I decided, no way. I can't do. I can't do this anymore. Yeah? This was when I was advised by my tutors at Lambeth College. Mervily, you could use your assignments for your first book, the way you structured them. Yeah? This is me on Sky News, 2011. This is a book I wrote about inclusion as a result of David Cameron's intervention. And I was put in touch with the Department for Work and for Education because I wrote an open letter. One to Theresa May later. This is where I was advised to do volunteering so I could train as a teacher for 16 year old to adult. Yeah? And this is the statistic that was used to help make me a victim. S one in five of all suicides are associated with unemployment. This is where I come in now since COVID. 600,000 older people in the UK say they get out of the house once a week or less. Before COVID, 
I have the Walworth living room where I volunteered with Pembroke House. So if I'm feeling down out of sorts, I could easily put myself together, go mingle with people. COVID took all of that away from me. Yeah? And to know that I trained with cardboard citizens and what cardboard citizens have done to me also lately. Yeah? I applied for theater of the op oppressed and the way I've been treated. So now I have to look back at the way I've been treated from the first time I'd, I decided I am not going to accept discrimination. So that, and after the death of my brother, the first nervous breakdown at King's College NHS Foundation just to we are now London Early Years Foundation with all the reviews online about abuses. They're still operating out, out, of, out of House of Commons Nursery, where I was sent to be colonized after I raised concerns about my mental health and what was happening to me. And now Leaf can say they have no data for me. Yeah? And in spite of what was happening to me, I could be page one of ITV News, Winrush 70, I've got to still be doing something up until then. My son has faced a similar discrimination as to what I've, I've, uh, uh, I've had. And you expect that I'm just going to accept today's the date. I said my final goodbye to my mother. In Jamaica for four weeks for my son's wedding. Mom didn't know me, but on the day I was coming back to England, she said, told my son, I didn't come to say goodbye and I know I know that would be my final goodbye and that's why that's why I heard yesterday on the news nine police officers are uh, nine police officers charged for breaking COVID rules today 37 year old police officer died from COVID yeah and these bastards yeah, these bastards, these bastards, yeah, these bastards, it's going to do this, yeah, and give a pat on the back, it didn't happen just once, it happened twice, when the first lot came, they did not wear PPE. When the second lot came, they did not wear PPE. The first lot, I'm sure they didn't put on their body cams. The second lot had their body cams, and that's what they're working with. So they're working with what happened from memory and using my complaints to build a story. Yeah? Yeah? So these are they, and I'll be doing more of this because as my, my thingy said, this is not the first time. The police has been given chance. Yeah? As an, un, as an organization, we are fully aware that we police by consent and are victim-focused, but not victim-led. Who is the victim in this? How many, how many people... How many organizations, how many from the legal system has made me the victim instead a building that's in that news is the focus. And I'm going to read this now because this officer this officer must be disciplined in her use of force notes pc Wright has stated female was actively resisting arrest and in trying to leave the room and trying to leave the room she was struggling with officers and tensing up making her difficult to restrain force was used to apply handcuffs to secure her thus protecting officers and assisting the arrest and preventing disappearance while struggling with the female she took hold of the handle of my taser so i used pain compliance techniques on her fingers to release her grip yeah in what sequence does this come 
In what sequence did this come? Female was actively resisting arrest and trying to leave the room. Yeah? She was struggling with officers. Officers! And tensing up, making her difficult to re restrain. Force was used to apply handcuffs to secure her, thus protecting officers and assisting the arrest and preventing disappearance. Yeah? While struggling with the female. So I'm, str I'm struggling with officers now. But it, down here I'm struggling with female. She took hold of the handle of my taser. So I used pain compliance techniques on her fingers to release her, her grip. I was the EYFS coordinator. Senko multi-generational working approach facilitator for LEAF. Anybody reading this? Anybody reading this? Yeah? I've had to do report writing. Working in partnership. Yeah? With professionals. Anybody reading this can just tell you how depraved the person who has written this, colluding with those, uh, is are. I leave it here.